glad you could join us this morning. I can't believe that it's July already. The pandemic is making time go so slowly, but it also feels like time is flying by. Just another layer of chaos for the already jumbled world we live in right now. But during the month of July, Pastor Tim and I will be focusing our morning meditations on different parables from the Gospel of Luke. And in the words of Caroline Lewis, Jewish Jesus tells parables not for explanation, but for exploration. Not for answers, but so as to engage the imagination. Not for certainties about faith, but for discoveries about how faith works. So we will be digging into these stories to explore our faith and to think about how God interacts with the creation God so loves. So let's hear our first parable from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15. Jesus said, Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I have lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. So today we hear our first parable and our first jump into the parables, the woman with the lost coin. It is the second in a series of three about things that are lost that are then found. First, there's a story about a lost sheep, and then we have the lost coin, and then there's the story of about a lost son. The parable of the prodigal son is very well known, and it's a longer story. So the first two, the sheep and the coin, those two are usually clumped together. And in that pairing, the first has a male character and the second has a female character. There is a fantastic balance of genders in these two stories, which is a characteristic of Luke's gospel as a whole, but that's a topic for a whole nother meditation. When Jesus told these three stories, tax collectors and sinners were coming near to him to hear him speak, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling about Jesus eating with them. Let me say that in another way. In the setting of our parable, we have the religious elite complaining because Jesus would dare to spend time with and engage in the safe, comfortable act of breaking bread with people society had deemed completely lost, disposable, and unworthy. And these were the people that were drawing near to Jesus to hear him speak. So Jesus tells the lost, disposable, despised people, and those in authority are overhearing this. He tells them a story about a woman who desperately searches her home for a lost coin. She burns precious oil to light a lamp, only to turn her house upside down in order to find that what was lost. And when it is located, she throws a party. And this seems like a pretty extravagant response. I could understand her being happy about it or relieved because it was bugging her because she knows she just saw it but can't remember where. But a party? This seems silly and extravagant. But this is a key piece of the parable. When something happens in Jesus' parables that aren't expected, when a reaction doesn't match the situation, we know we are to perk up. The woman tosses her house because she is desperate to find what is missing. And she is beyond thrilled when it is located. Then she invites her friends and neighbors to come celebrate with her. She opens wide, opens wide the doors because her excitement, joy, and delight cannot be contained. She has to share it with everyone else. And Jesus tells us that this is how thrilled the angels of heaven are when people repent, when people are drawn back into a relationship with God and with their community. The response is so extravagant that to others, it would seem out of place. This is the amount of love God has for all that God made. Scholar Greg Carey made a great point about why the tax collectors and sinners would be following Jesus in the first place, especially when we have three stories in a row urging sinners to repent, to correct their behavior, and re-engage their connections with God and with others. He writes, Jesus seeks to bring sinners to repentance, but not once does Jesus actually scold or correct a sinner. Instead, he eats with them. Jesus never gives up on us. He lights expensive oil, tosses the house, and searches desperately for us. And when we are found, he throws an incredible bash when we are reunited with him and with our community. 
even if we are the ones to walk away, to be unsure, to spend time hiding in the corner, under the rug, or behind a chair, Jesus doesn't ever consider us completely lost, disposable, or unworthy. Actually, he invites us over for dinner. Thanks be to God. So a few discussion or reflection questions for you. The first is, have you ever felt like the coin, completely lost and discarded by others? And how did it feel to be found again, to be reunited with God and the community? Second, have you ever thrown a party because you were filled with joy or utterly relieved? What was the cause for that celebration? And if you haven't, what event would inspire you to host such a gathering? Third, what do you make of Jesus eating with, rather than scolding or correcting, what do you make of Jesus eating with those who are considered sinners? How might that shape your engagement with the world? And last, there is a series of three stories focusing on what was lost being found. Why do you think Jesus might tell the seemingly same story three times with three different items? Why the repetition? Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you. So let us close in prayer. God of love, Draw us deeper into relationship with you and the loving community that surrounds us. When the world is cruel and we feel disposable and unworthy, help us cling to the promise that you will always look for us because we are never too lost for you. Fill your creation with the joy of heaven when celebrating the reunion with one for whom you have so much love. Help this joy and compassion influence our interactions in the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for joining me today, church. I hope you're staying safe, doing well, and I hope you have a great week. Thanks so much. Take care.